Yep. Hey, Kayla. Okay. Hey, guys. I hey, am hey. a big fan. So we have a lot to talk about in six minutes, okay? Okay. Um, gotcha. So um, this season, you guys dealt with some serious topics, sensitive topics like racism, um, domestic violence, suicide. Uh, um, what did I call you, Maurice? <laughs> Mm-hmm. You, um, you dealt with the hate crime. So for Trinity and for Brian, what was that like for you guys tapping into that role? Because you dealt with the hate crime and you dealt with racism. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll start. Uh, it was sobering um, for me because I was unaware of how uh, present and real those things were in America. And I think that I can partially blame it on media and the lack of coverage, but I think that it's also just me being um, disengaged from a certain type of people and not understanding um, quite the struggle. Um, so it was sobering for me, but it was also informative in a way where I learned so much and I was able to do the research and embody something that was very true to so many people who have experienced it and who some are not even here today to speak about it. So I was honored. I was sobered. Um, and now I'm constantly bringing the awareness to it. And for me, it, like Brian said, it's definitely an honor. Anytime you can shed light on something um, that, that is so prevalent in today's society, um, it, it, particularly in today's uh, current climate, as far as racism and racial divide, um, it's something that we need to talk about. You know, there's no way around that we need to talk about it. It needs to be discussed. Um, I don't think sweeping it under the rug uh, is, is acceptable anymore. And the more exposure you have to it and the more we talk about it, the more likely we are to see change that is it's needed and it's past time. I agree. Now, only two episodes left of season two. What can we look forward to? Can you give us any sneak peeks? Hmm. Some unanswered questions will be answered. Um, some other questions may or may not be answered. Um, oh, a lot of jaw dropping moments. Uh, a lot of what we just said, uh, side switching. One minute you're on one person's mm-hmm. side, the next person time you're on somebody else's side and um, more conversations um, that'll be had amongst fans and you know, people who really connect with these characters. Yeah. Now, now you guys were renewed for season three, so big congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Um, how important is it for viewers to see a predominantly all black cast? I think it's uh, paramount. I think that it is something that um, we fight so hard for as artists. And um, it is something that is lacking. I think that all black casts maybe make up 3% of television and film in America and um, African American people, black people don't just make up 3% of the population. Right. So it's, um, we're, we're, we're deprived of so much exposure. And I think that this is revolutionary. And I hope that this will, the success of this show will inspire more producers to make more black film, more black TV, you know, th- because it's always successful. It happened with Black Panther. They work so hard to get it made and then it blows it out of the water. But it, it, I think it's also a, a shame not to get on a soapbox that we have to be the number one show and have these amazing numbers when nobody thinks that we're going to have them mm-hmm. to get things made. But learn your lesson and make more Black stuff. Thank you. <laughs> How about you guys? Um, it's, I mean, pretty much piggybacking off of what Brian said. It's important. And not only will this inspire to tell our stories, but hopefully it will inspire <clears throat> Asian Americans and you know Hispanic to tell their stories because everybody has a story and everybody has a right to have their story told. That's so right. this will be if if we have to be one of the stepping stones to do that, so be it. You know, we're honored, we're privileged to be a part of this. And you know, we don't take it for granted. We know it's a huge responsibility, but we're all, you know, God wouldn't put us in these situations in this in this situation in particular to, you know, just let us fail. So we're honored to be doing this. And last question really quickly, how accurately can <clears throat> the show depicts dating in Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> I, you want a percentage? <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. 
I mean, what's the population of men to women in Atlanta? I think it's more men than women. It is it? I thought so. Well, I'm new to Atlanta. I'm not. I'm not. From oh, okay, New York. I think I'm from New York, but I've been here for two oh, years, and okay. I hear from friends it is terrible. I know Trinity, you're married. I know Anthony, you're in a relationship, but I'm sure you have friends. Or is it is it really that bad out here? Speaking for the men, <laughs> it might be paradise for the men. I have uh, uh, female friends, and I'm like, oh, I want to come to Atlanta. I'm like. All right. Like, I mean, you know, but never say never. I feel like what you put out is what you're going to get back. If you're out looking for just hookups and fun, you're going to get that. If you give off something that, you know, you want a healthy relationship, you'll receive that. I don't think it's just the city. I just think yeah. that there's a lot of distractions here in the city that may, you know, or may not distract you. So yeah, right. I, yeah, exactly. I just each individual is in control of their own destiny, destiny, regardless of their location. So I don't care if you're in Atlanta or Alaska. Um, whatever you want and whatever situations you put yourself in, um, it is going to bring about whatever that is. You go looking for yeah. the devil. You're gonna find him. Okay. <laughs> and the devil is in Atlanta. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much, guys. I look forward to the next two episodes and I uh, look forward to season three also. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.